In this video, what we're going to do is learn how we can create an embossed text effect in Adobe Photoshop. Cool, so I have Adobe Photoshop open, and as you can see, this is the effect that we're going to try and recreate today. So essentially what we have here is an image in the background and a text object in the foreground, which has a load of effects on it, which is creating this embossed look. Now this is an example that I have already created, but all you'll need in order to actually follow along with this is a new text object, just any font, any color, whatever text object you want. And of course, featuring any source text that you want to use. And then all you need is a background. So you can have an image like I have at the moment, or you can just create a new layer with a solid color fill. So in order to start applying an embossed effect on our text, the first thing we need to do is actually reduce the fill on the layer itself. And this will basically mean that the color that is currently attached to the text object will be removed so it looks like the text is part of the background source material, which in this case is an image. Now you don't have to do this step right now. If you'd rather leave the solid color in, you can do that too, that's absolutely fine. But what I'm gonna do is select the text object in the layers panel on the right hand side here. I'm then gonna go to the fill and I'm just gonna reduce that to 0%. And at the moment we won't be able to see our text object because obviously the fill the interior opacity of our layer is 0%. So in order to start applying a layer effect to our text object, all we have to do is double click on the layer itself. And this will open the layer style window. And from here, we'll be using several effects to actually recreate this embossed look. So the first one that we obviously want is the bevel and emboss. So first of all, what we need to do is take the box on the left hand side in order to activate that effect. But at the moment, what we don't get is all of the settings specifically for the bevel and emboss effect. And in order to get these up, what you need to do is make sure you actually have the text selected too. So first thing that you'll notice is that our text has now magically reappeared. And this is because it's applied an embossed effect to our text. Now yours might not automatically be set to embossed. On the top here of our structure options here, there's the style option and yours will probably be set to outer bevel at the start. Each of these styles creates a different kind of look for your emboss or bevel effect. I'm actually going to make sure I have the embossed effect selected, but you can use any of the other ones too if that creates the look that you're looking for. I've also changed the technique from smooth to chisel hard for this example, just because I think it looks slightly better on the image that I have. But once again, use the one that you think is best for you. Then the next few options that we have are the depth, which basically refers to how deep the bevel or the emboss is going. So for example, if I increase the depth, it's obviously at its max and the lower the depth, obviously the lower it is. And in order to clarify this a bit better, I'm actually going to reset these opacities here to 50%, which should be what you have too, just so we are on the same page. So I'm gonna go back to the depth and I'm probably gonna leave it slightly higher, just enough to see it, something like that. Now the next option you have is the direction of your bevel and emboss. The up basically means it's coming out of the source material in the background and the down means it's cutting into the source material of the background. So as you can see here, it looks like it's actually engraved within the wood pattern. So I'm gonna leave it up in this case because I want it to come out of the wood pattern. And then we also have the size, which refers to the size of the emboss. So I can increase that or decrease it. I'm not gonna to go too exaggerated in this example. And then you can also soften the edges of your bevel and embossed if you want more of a rounded look rather than the harsh lines that it's automatically created. I'm also gonna leave that slightly lower. The next, we also have another very important category, which comes to the lighting of your bevel and emboss. So in order to create the look of your bevel and emboss, Photoshop generates a highlight and a shadows for the emboss effect, which creates the 3D look. Now, if you have an image in the background, like the case here, you'll probably want to match the lighting settings on your bevel and emboss with the lighting in the image. So as you can see here, the lighting at the moment is coming from the right hand side here. And this you can basically affect by using the angle and amplitude values here. So you can also use this slider in order to actually change the direction of the light. So I want the light to come from the right hand side because as you can see, the light is right here, but it also doesn't look like it's very directional. It actually looks like it's almost on top of the wood where the photo was taken. So I'm gonna move it slightly closer to the text itself. So it's slightly more in the center. So like with some of these other settings, this is obviously up to interpretation depending on the photo that you are using. And then finally, the last two options that we want to consider are the highlights and the shadows themselves. So in some cases, the highlights might be too strong depending on the photo that you're using. And in other cases, the shadows might be too dark and they don't quite match what you have in the background. Now, the first thing that you can do is actually change the color of the highlights and the shadows. So just by pressing on either of these two colors on the right hand side, 
the color picker option comes up and you can actually select a color on your image. So for example, a darker part of my image are the shadows right in the bottom left hand corner here. And just by selecting that, it's gonna create that color within the color picker. And if I press okay, it's going to match those shadows to the shadows in my image, which makes it look slightly more realistic. I can do the same for the highlights if I want to. So I can press on the white box here and then find some highlights in my image. So for example, this corner here, and then I can press okay. And this helps to merge the highlights and the shadows in slightly more with the image. Now the highlights that I've selected from the image in this case are quite dark. So I might actually want to go ahead and change those colors in order to brighten them up a bit so we can see the highlights slightly better. Once again, it's always going to be down to interpretation and how much you want to reflect on the image behind. So those are essentially how you can create the bevel and emboss effect itself. You can also do one or two other things in order to exaggerate the bevel and emboss effect if you want to. So for example, I always like to add a drop shadow just because this always adds a bit more of a 3D element to our effect. So as you can see, I have created a drop shadow. I'd highly encourage you to match the angle to the angle of the lights that you used in the bevel and emboss effect. So if you remember where I had the light coming from the right hand side, in this case, I also want the angle of the drop shadow to be coming from that side too, so that the shadows are on the left hand side of my text. Just by altering some of these other settings, I've therefore also been able to create a bit of a shadow around our subject, which in this case is the text. So for example, you could affect the distance, which is how far the shadow goes out from your source material, the spread, and then also the size of the shadow which I like to leave slightly low. I don't really want to over exaggerate the shadow in this case, but if I take that box, you can see how big the effect is on the 3D look of our text. And finally, what you can also do is actually add a texture to your text. So just go into this texture option within the bevel and emboss effect itself. So I've actually gone ahead and created a pattern of this image so I can also use it as a texture on top of the bevel and emboss effect that we already have. And this basically adds some extra texture details within our text to make it look even more realistic. So as you can see, if I untick that and retick it, it basically adds some extra highlights and shadows depending on the luminosity of the pattern that you use. Now, if you want to be able to create a pattern from your image, what you should do is go to window and then make sure there is a tick next to patterns. Then from here, what you can do is quickly hide the text object itself, just so we see only the source material that you want to use as a pattern and then go to the patterns options on the right hand side, which should have appeared when you use the window option. And then make sure you have the image layer selected and press on create a new pattern option here. And this will let you create a new name for your new pattern, like so, and then I'll press okay. And as you can see, this has created a new pattern. And then if you unhide your text object and go to the bevel and emboss effect again, just by double clicking on any of the effects here, then go to texture, and then go to pattern and you can select the pattern from this option here that you've just saved. And this should apply the texture with the pattern you just created to your text. And then you can just press okay once you're happy with all of that. And there you go. As you can see, we've now created a text object with all of the bevel and emboss effects on it. Like I said, at the start of the video, you can also increase the fill once again, if you also want to include the color that was already on your text. And as you can see, it's also left the textures and bevel and emboss effects on it. So it also looks 3D. Great, so if you enjoyed that video, you might also be interested in learning how you can create a text outline with transparent text in Adobe Photoshop. If so, then check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss any Photoshop tutorial.